Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dan Deutsch and I'm going to be presenting this work which I did with Tanya Bedrocks-Weiss and Dan Roth called Towards Question Answering as an Automatic Metric for Evaluating the Content Quality of a Summary. Um, so as you may have guessed from the title, I'm going to talk a lot uh, about evaluating summaries. And the most popular way that people do that today is with these reference-based evaluation metrics. And the way that these work, if you are given a candidate summary that you need to score, for example, the one here shown above about um, a Buckingham Palace guard that slipped on a manhole cover, uh, a reference-based evaluation metric is going to calculate a quality score for this candidate summary by comparing it to a, a reference summary which was written by a human. Um, the most popular metric to do this, which most people use, is Rouge, um, and it calculates the similarity based on some n-gram overlap. Um, and it's very popular today, despite many known issues with the metric, um, including uh, its correlations to ground truth judgments. Um, but when I say that we are trying to evaluate the quality of a summary, well, what does that really mean? Well, we think that a desirable property of a summary that we want to measure is the quality of its information, which really means, does the summary contain summary-worthy information? And in this work, we're going to define information as what can be expressed through the predicate argument relations in the summaries. And the correct information is what is contained within the reference summaries. So in these two summaries here, the text that I've highlighted uh, has both of the summaries talking about the rifle of the, uh, the guard who slipped, but the reference summary on the left talks about how the soldier is still holding the rifle um, when he fell, whereas the candidate summary on the right is talking about how the rifle was not loaded. And so although they do mention the rifle, the information about the rifle is not the same, and we don't want to um, reward the candidate summary for having the incorrect information. And so we're going to propose this metric, which is, uh, is, is, is built into this, what we call a QA-based evaluation framework. And so in these QA-based evaluations, um, the reference summary's information is represented by a set of question and answer pairs. And then we try to answer those questions against the candidate summary that we want to score. And in this setup, the candidate summary should answer the question if and only if it contains the information corresponding to the QA pair. And although uh, we can't perfectly instantiate this metric because um, our QA models may be imperfect, we're going to propose a metric called QA eval, which um, does instantiate this met with metric with today's state-of-the-art models. And before I get into exactly how QA eval works, I wanted to um, point out some other work which has used QA to evaluate summaries in the past. Um, so it has been used in crowd-based evaluations um, before, and it has also been used recently to um, evaluate the faithfulness or the consistency of a summary. And the faithfulness is really a measure of whether the summary contains information which is supported by the input document. Whereas what we are interested in in this talk is the content quality, which is a measure of whether or not the summary contains the right information. Uh, APES, which was proposed a couple of years ago, they also evaluate the content quality, but they use these closed style uh, question and answer pairs. And we perform a detailed analysis between our work and theirs, but it is included in the paper, but I won't cover it in this talk. Um, so our work is generally more applicable than theirs, and uh, we also include a pretty detailed analysis of each of the components of the metric, and we have improved state-of-the-art results. Um, so how does QA eval work? So if we are given this reference summary that says Nadal lost to Federer on Sunday, and the candidate summary that we want to score so that says uh, Roger Federer beat Nadal. Well, the first thing that we do is the answer selection step where we select noun phrases from the reference summary that are going to be answers to questions which we'll generate. Then we use a pre-trained question generation model to generate a WH question for each of those noun phrases. And together, the set of QA pairs becomes the representation of the information in the reference summary. Next, we're going to use a pre-trained question answering model to try and answer these questions against the candidate summary. Uh, once we have the predictions, then we need to determine if they're right through the step which we call answer verification. We're going to compare the, um, the original answer to the model's prediction. And we're gonna do this with two different uh, string comparison methods, this exact match or EM and token F1. 
Finally, once we have all of the EM and F1 scores, uh, we average them to get the final score for the summary, uh, leaving us with these two evaluation metrics, which we call QA val EM and QA val F1. And briefly, uh, the way that we actually implement these is that the answer selection step selects all of the noun phrases within the reference summary to generate questions for. Um, the question generation model is this BART-based model that learns these very templated style of question generation. And the QA model is this Electra-based model, um, which is trained on Squad 2.0, and it can predict whether or not a question is or is not answerable. Um, so in the paper, I, we, we go through and we evaluate all of the different components of the model. But in this talk, I'm only going to be able to cover the overall end-to-end -end evaluation of the metric, as well as some details about the QA and answer verification uh, evaluations that we did. Um, so before I actually talk about the results, I have to briefly explain how we actually do uh, the evaluation of evaluation metrics themselves. And the way that we do this is that we calculate how well these metrics score to human judgments of quality. And so in this talk, I'm going to focus on these two data sets, this TAP 2008 and uh, the data set recently collected by Fabria et al. from the CNN Daily Mail data set. And both of these data sets have thousands of summaries which were judged by experts for either overall responsiveness or relevance scores. And we're going to use these two uh, these two data sets and their judgments as sort of the ground truth for their quality. Then we're going to calculate two different types of correlations, the system and summary level. And these roughly um, measure how similarly the uh, human and the metric score systems or score individual summaries. And both of these correlations can be calculated with three different correlation coefficients and we'll report all three of them. Um, to compare our metric against other evaluation metrics, uh, we're also going to compare it against the pyramid score, which is the gold standard for this human-based comparison of summary information. It's not directly comparable because they all, um, it is a manual evaluation that uses experts, whereas ours is going to be fully automatic. Uh, Rouge, the popular metric, which compares summaries based on their n-gram overlap. There's also a mover score, which uh, scores a summary based on some um, embedding and based alignment that it calculates. Uh, peer eval is um, a metric which tries to automate the pyramid score by matching clauses in the summaries based on their embeddings. And apes, which I mentioned before, was this closed style QA approach. And so here are the uh, overall correlation results on the two data sets, the TAC on the left and the Fabry et al. on the right. And what we find is that uh, the QA metrics have the best or they're tied for the best at the system level on both data sets. And they're, uh, the same is true for the summary level on the uh, Fabry et al. However, we do see that there's slightly lower performance on the attack data set at the summary level. Um, and I'm going to explain why uh, we think that's case, uh, case uh, why that's true um, coming up. Um, and I want to highlight that the statistical tests which we are doing here for statistical significance are based on this work which we did, which is going to appear in Tackle. And so in order to investigate uh, sort of what's going on and maybe partially explain the lower correlation performance, um, we manually labeled a set of a few thousand question and answer pairs on these two data sets. Um, and what we found is that the model's ability to identify if a question is answerable drops a lot. So here I'm reporting the F1 score on um, whether or not the, the, the model's ability to predict if the question is answerable. And we find that relative to it's the model's performance on the squad data set that it was trained on, uh, it drops rather significantly, indicating that this could introduce a lot of noise into the evaluation. Um, further, if we only examine the answers, uh, the, the, the questions for which the model uh, correctly predicts an answer exists, um, we find that based on our human annotations that the accuracy of this is about 85%. So 85% of the time, the QA model is picking out the right answer. But if we were only to rely on exact match or the token F1 to calculate this accuracy score, um, it, it, it's, uh, it drops rather significantly, meaning that these two string comparisons are not successfully uh, determining whether or not the answer is correct. And we really think this is happening because unlike in squad, the prediction from the model and the answer are coming from two different source texts. 
So the, it's increasing the likelihood that the answers are expressed in different ways. So for example, here on the right, we have this answer where it's talking about the February assassination of a particular prime minister, and the model's prediction is the killing of Lebanon's former PM. And I would argue that these are the same, uh, that this is a correct answer, but there are almost no tokens that are common between them. Um, and so then we asked the question, well, how much would the performance increase uh, if we had human level question answering and answer verification performance? Um, and so what we found is that here I'm showing the summary level correlations on TAC and CNN on the uh, set of labeled QA pairs, which we have. And so it's not directly comparable to the previous correlations, which I showed. But we see that when we have human level performance for both of these bottlenecks, that the correlations uh, increase um, significantly on TAC, approaching that of um, the pyramid score. Um, we didn't see as much as a benefit in CNN case, potentially because the QA model does fare a little bit better. So uh, using human level performance doesn't um, actually increase the results as much. But we were happy to see that with improved QA and answer verification performance, where the metric is currently lacking, um, it has the potential to do really well. And this is, um, we think this is a good indication that this is the direction for um, continued research. Um, so I think one of the uh, one of the difficulties to get the summarization community to evaluate summaries with a metric other than Rouge is the difficulty of using the metrics. And so we've put a lot of effort into this library called Sacre Rouge, which makes it easy to evaluate not only with QA eval, but with several other evaluation metrics, including Rouge. Um, so I just wanted to bring that to people's attention and hopefully people will be able to use it. Um, finally, I just want to conclude by saying that we proposed this QA metric to evaluate the information quality of a summary. Uh, we demonstrated that the, it gets state-of-the-art correlation results on benchmark data sets, and we identified two uh, inf uh, performance bottlenecks in the QA model and the answer verification. Um, and we think that the results from our paper really indicate strongly that uh, QA-based metrics are a promising direction for future research. Thank you.